Joining me now, though, is the leader of the Nationals, David Littleproud. Is talk to us from the Yarraka Hotel in Queensland. Uh, look, thank you so much for your time, uh, David Littleproud. Well, this pub is actually famous for the emus demanding a drink. They can be quite hostile. All clear tonight? You're not going to be pecked off the camera? No, I'm all safe, mate. Two years ago, we came through here, and I thought the the publicans were having a crack at the tourists that were coming through. They had a they had a rope across the stairs so that people couldn't come through, and oh, I thought they were having a joke. But the next morning, they were here, and it went viral around the world. They showed photos of one of the emus on one side of the bar, and another on the other. It looked as though they were serving each other a grog, and uh, <laughs> it went viral. But such is the outback, and such is Yarraka. I've got to say, this is one stop. If you come to at the outback in Queensland, you've got to come to the Yarraka. A pub, have a night here. Uh, you'll enjoy it, and the locals are friendly. Uh, even the emus. Well, you don't even need to go to the outback. I just had to buy a piece of fish from the local fishmonger operating a caravan in Hastings, and I got pecked at by a pelican who was first in line. <laughs> he wouldn't let me go through. <laughs> anyway, I want to talk to you. Actually, I want to talk to you about disturbing news from Queensland uh, for farmers, particularly around Australia. Um, but I also have to ask you first, though, about this extraordinary story in Canberra. Scott Morrison's Prime Minister secretly making himself the Minister of five other departments that already had ministers. What on earth was going on through his mind, do you think? Well, obviously, we're disappointed, and I made that clear as the leader of the Nationals now, and, and asked for an explanation, and, and Mr Morrison's provided that explanation today. Uh, and rightfully, he's admitted he got it wrong. Uh, and uh, we have to accept that he he's made that acknowledgement. It wasn't the right thing to do. Uh, uh, it, it was just about making sure that his colleagues knew that he'd done that and, and making sure that we understood as a Cabinet the reasons why. And that's the respect that should be given to the institutions of, uh, of Cabinet by the Prime Minister, who leads and chairs that committee. So it's important that that was provided, and he didn't provide that, and he's, he's admitted he, he's done wrong there. And I think it's important that that's a, a lesson not only uh, to Mr Morrison but to future governments, but particularly when you get into times of crisis, that you rely on the, on the collective wisdom of your Cabinet to help you get through those times, uh, because invariably you have better decisions when you uh, rely on the collective wisdom of a Cabinet. Cabinet, no matter no matter the type of, of threat that the country faces. So uh, I think that's a, a very big lesson learned for our democracy and, and the institutions that we should hold dear for our nation moving forward. And I think it was important that he, ge he gave that explanation uh, and it was important that he provided that and to those ministers that he'd signed in uh, over, over the top of during that period. You were Deputy Prime Minister. How many of those secret appointments did you know about? No, I wasn't Deputy Prime Minister. I, I was the Agriculture Minister and, and Deputy Leader. I, I knew nothing. I knew that there was actually some challenges around PEP 11, uh, that there was negotiations happening, and, and I did, wasn't uh, uh, invested as the Agriculture Minister in that. I understood that Keith was holding firm on what he was trying to achieve, and I, I know that uh, there was d significant discussions between the Nationals and the Liberals on that, but I must admit I wasn't as invested, and I know that those discussions went deep and late uh, into the term of our government, uh, and obviously uh, there was final decision made in that. But uh, obviously, uh, Keith's obviously disappointed. He felt as though he'd made the right decision, and I think w most Nationals would back him in that. Yeah, but he was uh, still uh, these five secret ministers at, to the end of his term when you were Deputy uh, Prime Minister. I think you should have been told. Uh, the news from Queensland, though. We've already seen in Holland, for instance, a farms protest against global warming rules that are going to put many out of business, more than 1,000, uh, and, and cut herds and many others. But now the same could happen here. There's secret legislation drafted by the Queensland Environment Department that means a bureaucrat could force farmers to cut down their livestock could force mines to dig up less coal and gas fields to extract less gas, even if they've already got environmental permits. What do you know about this? Well, this is a frightening development and one in which the ideology of the Labor Party is coming through. And In fact, I heard this by Joel Fitzgibbon when I debated him at the press club when he said the government should tell farmers what they should produce and where they should produce it. There's some parts of our country where they shouldn't be producing some, some forms of agricultural product. Uh, government shouldn't tell farmers what to do. The market will do that because farmers will either make a quid or they won't and they'll know how to do that better than government does. But now we're seeing fast forward a couple of years and the 
Queensland government is now trying to get into the lives, which they've already have to some respects with reef regs up in North Queensland. Uh, they've, they've actually, you've got a bureaucrat in Brisbane that can tell a farmer in North Queensland how much fertiliser they can put on their crop, even though they've improved the quality of water uh, that uh, they uh, irrigate with and then runs off their property and reduce the amount of runoff significantly to the extent that uh, I think is the best practice in the world. But now they want to go not just uh, to the reef areas, but to right across this state, to have a bureaucrat in the environment department tell farmers what they can produce and how much and, and add to that the, re the retrospectivity to it, which means you've had a development where that might be for a feedlot and you could have made that capital investment for tens of millions of dollars to, to actually produce the meat that we enjoy every night and have that taken and stripped away from you after you've made that capital investment because a bureaucrat in Brisbane may, may deem that you uh, could be uh, adding to carbon emissions that we shouldn't be. Now, that's a dangerous, dangerous track to go down. And ultimately, let's just put this back to what this will mean to your viewers. It means you will pay more at the checkout because if farmers are, are inhibited in what they can do and what they can produce, supply goes down and price goes up. It's simple economics and that's the effects of what the ideology of, of this Labor government is going to impose on our farmers. That means your food and fibre is going to go up at the checkout. So just be ready for that but understand that farmers are making their own practices in ensuring that they look after their land. And they don't need to be told because they look after the land because their profits go up by looking after the land. For some bureaucrat to tell them is absolute nonsense. Farmers know how to manage their lands because well, their profit loss is intrinsically tied. Well, this is the frightening thing, that, Andrew. That and it's been hidden is, course, for a long time, forget, but now we've got, got a Labor know. government. Well, but this is the thing. People have got to know that when Labor says a 42% cut in emissions by 2030, which is much higher than what you guys were going for, this applies to emissions from every sector, not just electricity. And agriculture is one of the biggies. They might say, oh, we won't do this now, but something's going to be done to farmers later if they're going to make their 42% cut uh, real by 2030. So uh, thank you very much for watching out. Well, this, this is a watch big... like a hawk because they're coming. David Littleproud, thank you so much for your time.